Hey guys, this video is about opioid overdoses. We're going to start by talking about the risk assessment. Then we're going to touch on the general effects, won't dwell on them too much. And then I'm going to just highlight a couple of specific effects you need to know about certain drugs. So Cameron's textbook of emergency medicine says that opioids are basically the most dangerous drugs that we have prescribed in that they cause more death than almost any other drug we use. And what is it that we need to know to make a risk assessment of someone who's taken an opioid overdose? Well, there's three things that you have to remember. The first one is you need to know the potency of the drug in question and potency is a measure of how much drug you need to achieve a given effect with the most potent drugs requiring smaller amounts of uh, the medication to achieve whatever effect it is you have. So as an example, fentanyl, uh, usually given in doses of 25 or 50 micrograms, would be significantly more potent than morphine, which would be given in, say, 2.5 or 5 milligram uh, doses. The second thing you need to know is the duration of action. So some opioids like morphine or diamorphine, which is heroin, are very short acting, um, maybe last an hour, and others much longer. So methadone, buprenorphine, all, all last many hours more than that. And the reason this is important is because in an overdose, clearly, if you've taken a longer duration um, drug, then you're going to need more observation and potentially more medical intervention. The other thing I'd kind of put with duration is the preparation. So if you have a modified release preparation, that again is going to require a more prolonged period of admission or observation compared to an immediate release formulation of the drug. And the third thing we need to know is, um, I put naivety, but it's, it's basically has the patient been exposed to opioids before. So an opioid naive patient, i.e. say a child who's just got into their parents' medication cupboard and managed to take some oral morphine, is clearly going to be at much higher risk compared to an adult who either has chronic pain or a substance misuse disorder and who is taking opioids every day of their life. So those three things are potency, duration, and naivety, and those are the main things that form your risk assessment for the opioid overdose. I'm not going to talk too much about the effects of opioids because I think a lot of people will know these already, but the two main ones you need to remember are respiratory depression, so it slows your respiration down, will uh, increase your carbon dioxide and eventually decrease your oxygenation and central nervous system depression. So it will decrease your level of consciousness, will cause uh, coma um, and complete unresponsiveness in many cases. Now, the individual examples I just want to touch on before we finish this video are a couple of specific drugs that you need to know some effects for. So tramadol has the propensity to cause seizures, and this is especially true if it's taken with other drugs that can cause seizures like an antidepressant or anti-epileptic. Methadone, uh, which is commonly used in opioid substitution therapy, has a very long half-life and also causes a dose-dependent QT prolongation, so you need to monitor their cardiac rhythm. And finally, a number of the opioids also have actions at the serotonin receptors. So the most common ones would be tramadol, tapentadol, methadone. There's a few rarer ones that also can be serotonergic, like pethidine. Um, but these ones are the main ones. And the, th the thing with this is that most of them are not that likely to cause serotonin syndrome on their own, but they are more likely to if they're taken in combination with another serotonergic drug.